This meeting is being recorded. All praise, honor, and glory to our Father, the creator of heaven and earth, Ahiah and his son, Yasha, and the Ruach HaKodesh. And the Ruach HaKodesh is the Holy Spirit. Shabbat Shalom, everybody, and welcome to Rooted in Righteousness. So be, today, what we're going to do, because the lesson Matthews 11 is quite short, we are going to, I have some spare time to pretty much, I have not been ignoring your emails and questions and things that I get. I'm just trying to find some spare time to, you know, be able to answer these questions biblically and successfully and you know just pretty much had the time to really put together and answer these questions um based on the word of our father so what we're going to do first is praying go over the objective and that is one of the questions that i do get is praying openly someone had asked how come we don't pray before we start and things of that sort. So I'm just going to answer that one and praying openly and publicly is not something that uh, we are commanded to do. We are commanded to pray in secret, go in our rooms, close our doors, and pray in secret. So before the lessons start, we do pray. And after the lessons is over, we pray. And reason being, because the lessons, once they're recorded, they're on YouTube, the, the videos can wind up anywhere and you never know who can hear your prayers and the prayer is supposed to be done in secret where your father knows and then he blesses you, okay? So then the name... I am that I am, Ahaya. We get that question a lot. Who is Ahaya? So we're going to go over that. The power of the Ruach questions all um, based on the word. And then we'll go into Matthew chapter 11 and we'll cover that. And then we'll have the closing thoughts and remarks and open discussion. Prayer, uh, actually closing thoughts and remarks then we'll close and then we have prayer and then open discussion okay so shalom and peace to everyone if you are new to this channel welcome welcome all praise to our father ahaya and his son yashu who leads in gaza by the ruach our kodesh the holy spirit if you miss what that is the ruach is the holy spirit into all truth hallelujah we are a family who are endeavoring to bring ourselves back together to perform the mandate to which our father has commanded us to do which is to be the light and the salt of the world and to carry his story his word to the rest of the sons and daughters of adam we are a loving and caring family who cares about all of our brothers and sisters we join together to enlighten, to encourage, and to edify one another. We are aware that we are a people who are in the land of captivity and our land of captivity among our oppressors. We embrace and acknowledge Deuteronomy chapter 28, the blessings and the curses. Please be encouraged to read Deuteronomy in its entirety if you have not already done so. No. And this is another one of the questions. No, we are not a group or an organization, nor do we follow any religion, organizations, churches, i.e. cults, camps, or any kind, of any kind. Please be careful, family. Please be careful. Test the fruit of the spirit and use discernment before becoming involved with any organization. Any organization that promotes racism and hate 
is a huge red flag. Hallelujah. Yes, all are welcomed. Yasha welcomed all. So this was another question. And this is found in Matthew chapter nine. Yasha ate with sinners. He welcomed all. But our father also tells us don't dwell and pray for wicked people. That's found in Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 14. There is a difference. This is why we are told to test the fruit. Family, we must always remember to take all things to our Father a higher in prayer. He is the only one who knows all things. Hallelujah. There is only one truth and there is only one teacher. And our teacher is Yahshua, whom leads and guides us by the Ruah into all truth, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We must test the fruit of the spirit in everyone and most importantly, examine ourselves. It is our father through the Ruach whom leads and guides and give us the discernment and the ability to accomplish that. Please, everyone, grab your Bibles, paper, pens, highlighters, and follow along. I strongly encourage you all to highlight those scriptures which you are led to highlight. I pray this study will be enlightening, encouraging, and edifying for us all. Hallelujah. What is the first thing we must do? Repent and turn from sin. That's the first thing anybody that wants self repent and turn from sin. Come from out of her, my people. This was another question. What does come from out of her, my people mean? Well, come from out of her, my people. It's in Revelation chapter 18, verse four. What does this mean? This means to come from out of following a system, the world. Scripture says, if we are friends with the world, we make ourselves an enemy to a higher. That's James chapter four, verse four. And then Romans 12, two says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of a higher. We must turn from all the wrong this world is teaching and has taught us or else we will be turned over to a reprobate mind. So we're going to look at the meaning to conformed and we're going to look at the meaning to reprobate mind. We're going to go into it a little further just so we all can make sure that we understand conformed. Conformed, obey, heed to, follow, keep to, hold to, you accepting, go along with, fall in with, pay attention to, Adapt to, sorry about that, adapt to, follow tradition, agree with, and be like. Conform, its prefix con, with or together means basically to adopt the form of those around you. Thus, employee behavior must usually conform with basic company policies. A certain philosophy may be said to conform with American values, even if we sometimes have a hard time agreeing on exactly what those are, such as working on a Sabbath day. And I could have added more things to this, but I said, y'all know... Uh, we all know some things that many people went along with. 
just to keep their jobs. I don't even have to mention that that was going on around the whole world. People, jobs were being threatened and being forced to do things that the father says do not conform. Now, I got this um, down here, um, this little example from somebody commented online, and this is what the person said. They said, being a conformist is usually a safe, a safe bet. How is that a safe bet when we just now read in the scripture right here that our father told us in Romans 12 too, not to do that? This is what we talking about is how the world has you to go along with doing things that this world does. The father tells us, do not conform to this world. But down the bottom, it says, being a nonconformist who ignores society standards and the whole idea of conformity can be a bit dangerous, but also sometimes more fun. I said, what? Being a non-conformist, that's basically saying, if you don't um, conform to society standards and the whole idea of conformity can be a bit dangerous. How's that dangerous? It's dangerous if we don't follow what our father tells us to do. That's what's dangerous. So it's nothing dangerous when you when if you don't go along with society. This is what's dangerous, not following Romans 12, 2, what the father said. That's dangerous. So I just got that little example from offline because that's that was a good example of somebody saying, um, you know, telling people to conform to the things of this world. And a reprobate mind, Shaul writes, Paul, Shaul is Paul, writes, there comes a time when people will reject and suppress a highest revealed truth. That's Romans chapter one, verse 18. If somebody can get that um, um, scripture for me and then read that for me, please. And um, I'm going to finish reading up Reprobate Mind. By that time, if somebody can uh, read uh, Romans chapter 1, um, 18. Un until he returns them over to a reprobate mind, Romans 1 through 28. Verse 28. What is a reprobate mind? A reprobate mind refers to those whom Ahia has rejected for their purposeful rejection of him and his word and their continual embracing of their unrighteous and sinful behavior. And as a result, Ahia turns them over to the inevitable destruction and consequences of their own vow affection and sin. Anybody wanna um, read Romans 1, 18? Somebody? What is that? The, oh, that's the heat, bro. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay. So, <laughs> right. Let me see. Roman, I, I meant to pull this Romans 8, 118. 118, somebody? Romans 118. I got it, sis, but I'm coming from the uh the living Bible. Okay, that's good. That's fine. Okay, and it reads, but the most high shows his anger from heaven against all sinful evil men who push away the truth from them. Hallelujah. And then it says, she said, uh huh. Um, King, the King James Version says, for the wrath of Ahia is revealed from heaven against all, against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. You got it? Okay. 
118. There is a guide that we must follow. And right here is just um, before we go into the uh, the next part, we have to understand that our father is spirit and truth. Our father, our creator, the great I am, a higher, the great I am that I am, a higher is spirit and he's truth. All spirit and all truth. These are just they have numerous of scriptures throughout the Bible that you all can um, go to. And I'm, I'm mainly um, um, answering another question that was in the email. Um, you all know who you are. Um, <clears throat> to explain how the father is spirit and he's truth. All these are uh, scriptures in um, Genesis 41 through 38 and so on and so forth. If you y'all want to screenshot it or you can um, just write them down, pause your recording and write these scriptures down. These are scriptures you can go to and, and see that the father is spirit. And the first group up top is the what the world wants to call the Old Testament. I don't separate the Bible like that from Old Testament and New Testament. The Bible is the Bible. All of it is a Bible. But, you know, our world wants to say this is old and this is new. I don't categorize it as that. But the top part is the first half of the book in the beginning and then the the last verses at the bottom is the, those in the um old i mean the new testament <clears throat> and we just simply go by the 10 commandments and what the father says this is the God. This is the God to what everybody's supposed to do. And the reason why we have um you will, if you're if you're not following the Ten Commandments, you will have many, many questions because you know it, it's just it's just the truth of the matter because a lot of people don't understand the Levitical law and the, the dietary law and what they supposed to be eating and what they not supposed to be eating. Um, you know, it's, it's not my um, God, it's not my law, it's not my commandments, it's the Father's. And I just simply follow what he tells me to eat, what he tells us not to eat because this is this these things is governed and laid out for us and if we don't follow what's laid out for us we're going to run ourselves into destruction he's going to hand us over to a reprobate mind we it's a reason why the father says the first commandment Exodus, and you can find um, the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. And Ahia spoke all these words, saying, I am, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. The first commandment he tells us is, have no other gods before me. And we know that there are many gods because simply because our father just sat here and told us it is many gods out here. And so the second, the second commandment is that shall not make unto any graven images. Graven images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is 
in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I am a jealous father, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth. We are the fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. This is where we going wrong at because the you 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 have many churches that throw away the commandments and throw away the first the 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 old testament and so this is why you have so many you're going to have people that have questions because if if you just go back to the law and the commandments a lot of you have to read the bible read the entire bible not just the new testament we can't just read the part that the pastors tell us to read and throw away the laws of the father for example i was going to use this this uh, example my mom said okay keisha stay in the house do your homework um clean your room I got all these instructions and what I'm supposed to be doing. And my mom laid out all these instructions for me to do. And I can't go outside until she come home from work, right? Then my friend comes over my house and I like to use this analogy because it's a great one. And my friend come over there and say, yeah, I just talked to your mother. She said, um, you can, you don't have to do your homework and you don't have to clean up and you can go outside. I'm like, oh, okay, I just jump on my stuff and just go ahead on outside. Am I supposed to call my mother on the phone and confirm with her if she said that or just, just throw away everything she told me verbatim Am I supposed to just throw all that out and listen to my friend and go ahead outside? No, I'm not. I'm supposed to call my mom and get confirmation and confirm with her what she said and if she even said that. But I already got the instructions verbatim and what she told me. I'm not going to listen to what somebody coming along to tell me Um. So just throw out everything she said and come on outside and just don't do nothing. Don't do your homework and don't clean up and just come on and go. No, that's not what we supposed to do, but that's what this world tell us to do. That's what this world tells us to do. This world tells us to have all the gods we want to have. We can serve all the gods made of wood and stone. We can have all the graven images. We can bow down to, a lot of people may say, um, well, I don't bow down to no images. Well, we're going to just, we're going to see about that. Because I, I pulled up some stuff because I said, we all guilty of this sin. We all guilty of bowing down to an uh, uh, image and an idol. Unknowingly, of course. We're unknowingly doing it. So the first one I capitalized right here, no other gods, any graven images and bowing down. So we're going to cover these in the next uh, slides. Jeremiah 10 verse one through five, since we in this season, that sure looks like bowing to bowing down to me, doesn't it? And we're all guilty of this sin, which seems to be very innocent. We all have done this. Each and every last one of us. Unknowingly. Because, you know, not... This is what the father means by bowing shall not bow down. But you know, Satan, he's a he's a deceiver. 
He's a deceiver. He a trickster. That's why the father said we must be as wise, as humble as a wise as a serpent and humble as a dove, right? <laughs> because that's how crafty and sneaky Satan is and trying to get you to do things unknowingly and not even having any awareness of what you're doing. But Satan, he don't care. He don't care if he gets you down to his, he don't care if he gets you there knowingly or unknowingly, long as you're going, long as you're coming with him. You know, we got to continue to stay on our toes and not be deceived and have our eyes and ears open and be watchful, especially now. Because they, this y'all is not going to believe this terrifying thing I found at the um at the uh uh White House. Y'all gonna see it in a minute. Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 1 through 5 it says hear hear the word which Ahiah spoke to you O house of Israel thus says Ahiah do not learn the way of the Gentiles. Do not be dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the Gentiles are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are futile. For one cuts a tree from the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with an axe. They decorate it with silver and gold and fasten it with the nails and hammers so that it will not topple over. Sounds like a Christmas tree to me. They are upright like a palm tree and they cannot speak. They just be carried. They must be carried because they cannot go by themselves. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, nor can they do any good. Okay. So now we're going to look at the, um, the other gods that our father was talking about right here. No other gods. There are many gods all over. I, I, I could have been posting, copying and pasting gods from here to, to, to the kingdom come. How many gods was on this thing when I, when I uh, typed in other gods? A million other gods popped up. This is why our father says, have no other gods before me because he already knew that he he knows this other gods that people worship they have a satanic church online uh online satanic church where you can log in and this this uh half man half beast um sitting on top of the world he's the god of this world there's the five point star um that's what the father says right here um no right here don't be dismayed at the signs of heaven don't be dismayed at the signs of heaven for the gentiles are dismayed at them this is what the father's talking about don't you see a star they worship the star god the sun god the moon god they have all kinds of gods all kinds of gods that they worship they worship the moon they worship the sun they worship the stars they stars in the sky they worship angels. They worship this um, uh, JC guy right here, made of wood and stone. And then they, um, let me pull this up. And I want to see if y'all can, uh, because, let me see. It's not no sound. It's just, I'm going to pause it. And then once we get to it, I'm going to pause it. And I want y'all to write down the hitting. This is inside the, uh, the White House. 
And I want y'all to find all, it's five things that's wrong in this photo. Which Joe Biden's wife, Jill, she posts this on her Twitter. And it's all over the all over the uh uh social media and it came up on my feed and I was like, what? And so I was like, wow, this is this is terrifying because this this is the world we live in. But his wife posts this on her Twitter. So it's five things wrong in this picture. I'm going to pause it and let y'all have time to just look and see what it is that um and see if y'all can find these five um items five things that's wrong in this picture it's a total of five When it get to it, I'll um I'll stop it. I'm gonna stop it one second. Okay. Now I'm going to box this off. And everything got to be in. Make sure y'all can see everything. Okay. Okay, y'all gonna have to turn. Oh, you okay? Got it. Okay. I could. Mm -hmm. You show. You show. You can see. Let me know when y'all um when y'all finish finding it. When everybody finished this, let me know. Y'all can hear me? Okay, sis, what was the question? I said, it's five things that's wrong inside this picture, in this photo. This is a, a picture that was posted, uh, that Biden's wife posted on Twitter. Now, it's five things wrong with this photo. And I want to see if everybody can find the five things that's wrong in this photo. Very demonic, demonic. 
Because if you're not looking, you'll just be like, oh, that is so pretty. No. No. Why you looking? Mm -hmm. You find something? Mm -hmm. How many you find? Two, three. You got two more. How many you find, Alicia? How many you find, sis? How many y'all find so far? Um, I see about Yeah, I might find see more one I know, sis, you probably could find something else because I didn't even see that little signal when we was on that bus tour that time. And you sp spotted that daggone symbol. And that's her Twitter up here, Jill Biden Flotus Twitter. And this guy down here, he posted the whole video. Y'all can go to YouTube when we get um, after the Shabbat. Because I was like, wow. And I, I don't, I, I didn't, I'm like, and she thought nobody wasn't going to notice that. He only pointed out one thing, but I, I, I pointed out four other things he only pointed out that one thing the biggest thing that was on there like you don't you don't that she she had to know that people was going to see that who little head is that in the um the left hand corner oh that's um that's the guy that was posting i'm a um, um oh okay I just couldn't I, see the whole thing, so. Yeah, I'm going a, I'm to a bloop him out because that's not part of it. Something terrifying just happened at the White House. That's the heading, the name of it, and then below um, that, just in that, what you see in that frame, that's where all the, everything is at. Uh, exactly. The entire picture is demonic. And this is our government, really. And you you post this, she posts this on Twitter. No, but people that don't know wouldn't wouldn't be able to see this if you're not, you're not, you know, people that's in, in out in the world still can't see this. <clears throat> oh, I was just waiting for everybody. Y'all, y'all ready? Yeah, we ready, sis. <clears throat> okay, mom, what you found? Um, uh, those. Who want to go? Who want to go first? Whoever could go first. 
those six uh, those six red lights and then the six heads and the six more red lights. There's six lights on this side and six lights on that side. And on that thing at the top, there's those, those heads, one, two, three on one side, then one, two, three coming down on the other side. Six, six, six. Come on, Mama Gail. That's what I was looking at too. Six red lamps over here. Then they look like little snake heads or something. One of them look like a little one, two, three, four, five, six. Then the six other lamps on the other side. Then the whole reef looked like a little devil with the two horns at the top. <laughs> and then it looked like a, a devil right there in the middle of the reef where you see the reef and you go up. What's that, a devil go right there? Yep, and then that flag down there, red, white, and blue flag. Whoa. You six, found more, six. you found, you found six because I, I didn't even see that. Them six snakes. This yeah, right here. Six, one, yeah. three, two, three, four, and one, two, five, three. six. And then six six red lamps over here and six red lamps six over, over here. Six over here and six over here. Six, six, six. And then the reef, that's right, because, you know, the bow supposed to be right here and the little things right here are supposed to hang down, not up. Right. So what them horns coming out of it? That's the goat. That's the goat. Right. The goat, the goat horns. Right. And that's the Baphomet right there. Right. And the center, that's the Baphomet. Mm, mm, mm. and then that's the the red flag right there so that's one two three mm, mm, mm. the reef is four the baphomet is five and then you and found the, the snakes. snakes right here one two three four five six wow six 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 mm. yep i i did i i i didn't see those right there mm-hmm Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is that's what everybody else seen too? The whole picture is demonic. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. Mm -hmm. And she posts this on Twitter. What? Yeah, she posts this on Twitter. Okay, let's get back. Mm -mm. Okay, I gotta close this button. So that's what right here is what you see in the middle. Uh, this. Uh, this oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I couldn't that's, see it. I was trying to uh, zoom in on it, but I couldn't see it. That right. Yeah. So this is why I showed this is why I showed this before I showed that. Just so mm -hmm. y'all would be able to, mm -hmm. to see that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to show mm -hmm. the. um. Yeah. And that's called a Baphomet. So as we go further, you'll see. Let's see. Let me go down. What's that writing on his arm? Coachella. Cold, cold, cold. It's supposed to be cold. Mm. Remember that. Remember that. Um, mm -mm. Remember that thing mm. that. Uh, mm. Cold. Well. Yeah. It's a spelling. It's a writing. And then once you pull it up, then you'll be able to oh, see okay. that. It's, 
Mm-hmm. It's it's definitely demonic too. So mm-hmm. that's um that's our White House. Mm-hmm. So we see we see up here um where the father says no other gods, any graven images, and shall not bow down. So now we're going to Habakkuk chapter two verses 18 through 20 what is a graven image um what profited the graven image that the maker thereof have graven it the molten image and a teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusted therein to make dumb idols woe unto him that saith to the wood awake to the dumb stone arise it shall teach behold Arise, it shall teach. But we know a graven image can't teach us anything. It is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. But Ahia is his holy temple. Ahia is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. And that's um, Habakkuk 2, 18, 20. And then we have another graven image right here. Graven images, this violates the first and second commandments. Exodus chapter 20, verse three. Exodus 20, verse four to six. Deuteronomy chapter four, verse 16. And Deuteronomy chapter four, verse 23. What did Yasha look like? And then read Isaiah 53. So y'all can screenshot these. Uh, These are just some more verses and scriptures you can write down and go read them on your spare time. And because it's so many, um, you know, different scriptures. So we're going to finish the rest of the commandments, the 10 commandment. Um, Commandment number four is remember this, excuse me, um, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy (laughs) six days shall you labor and do all your work but the seventh day is the sabbath of i am that i am ahia in it you shall not do any work you nor your son nor your daughter your your maid servant nor your man servant nor your maid servant nor your cattle so you couldn't even work your animals your animals couldn't even plow the field and you couldn't even do any of that nor your stranger that is within your gates for in six days I Ahia made the heaven and the earth the sea and all that is in in them and rested the seventh day where for Ahia blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it five is honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which I, Ahia, give you. Um, Six is thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbors, and thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's, which covet just means to desire or want something of somebody's or to be jealous or whatever. Um, That's what um, covet. So now we're going to go into the the prophecy, the Ruach of the prophecy and the name of Ahia and his son, Yasha. So this is the reason why we say Ahia and um, sisters, if y'all want to, if y'all have anything y'all want to add or just bring in, I mean, you know, please feel free to do so. Um, we all have, uh, you know, uh, 
to edify one another and, you know, to enlighten to, I know it's like a lot of people that may, you know, that y'all can probably help, um, you know, if, if you have an experience, if you get to something and you had an experience or something, just please just share it. So the Ruach of the prophecy in the name of Ahia, the purpose of Yasha's testament is to restore the Hebrew perspective to the four gospels and the book of Revelation. The five books that Yasha taught is a spiritual reflection of the five books that Moses wrote, M M Moshe. So Moshe is just pretty much the Hebraic name, the Aramaic name. Aramaic and Hebrew, the biblical Hebrew, not the modern day Hebrew. We're going to go into that. That Moses wrote in what the world calls Old Testament. I don't believe in Old Testament and New Testament because when Yahshua walked this earth, there was no such thing as a New Testament. Yahshua taught these five books, it was no book for him to even teach at the time, because when he walked the earth, they didn't write their testimony until after Yasha was gone. So Yasha was the what Yasha was teaching was a reflection of what Moses had already written or what Moses had already done. So let's view this via scripture. Yasha said in John chapter 5, 31 through 47, if I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies in my favor. And I know that his testimony he gives about me is true. You have sent messengers to John. So here, Yasha is speaking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the ones that made things so hard for people, burdened down people. And so Yasha is speaking to these people. This is who he's talking to. He told them, you have sent messengers to John and he has testified to the truth. I do receive human test I do receive human testimony but I mentioned these things so that you may be saved. John was a lamp that burned and gave light and you chose for a while to enjoy his light. I have a greater testimony than John's because of the works that the Father has given me to accomplish. These very works that I am doing testifies about me that the father's father has sent me. The father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You have never heard his voice at any time, nor have you seen his form. Because early in the lesson, I just, this is why I said that the, the, our father is spirit and truth. These, this is why Yahshua was saying, you, you have never seen his form you haven't seen any of that because the father doesn't have a form he doesn't have an image he doesn't have that he's all spirit and all truth so yasha is talking to them telling them he yasha goes on to say nor does his word dwell in you He said, nor does his word dwell in you because you do not believe the one he sent. So these Pharisees didn't even, the, y'all should say, you don't even believe the one that the father sent. So how, how the father's word going to dwell in these Pharisees? He said, you study the scriptures diligently. This is what the Pharisees was doing because you think that in them, you have eternal life. And yet the scripture you're studying testifies about me. So Yasha is still talking to them, but you are not willing to come to me so that you may have life. Verse 41 says, I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know you 
And I know that you do not have the love for Ahaya within your hearts. You see, again, the father looks at the hearts. I have come in my father's name and you do not accept me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe since you accept glory from one another, but do not seek the glory that comes from the only father, the great I am that I am. So Yasha went on to say right here, but do not think I will accuse you before the father. Yasha said your accuser is Moses on whom you hope on whom your hopes are set on so y'all should say if you believed moses you would believe me because moses wrote about me but if you do not believe what moses wrote how are you going to believe what i say in my words i'm reading this because this is going to go into answering the question about the name because if you're not going to believe what I'm about to show you in Exodus and what Moses and the father talked about, then you're not going to believe the name that it, it's nothing I'm going to be able to else. I'm going to be able to tell you this is the best way that I can explain a higher. The Greek I am that I am. So I'm going to do my very best. But right here in verse 46. Yasha said, if you believed Moses, now I'm, I'm speaking to the audience and those who continue to ask me who Ahaya is and why do I call him Ahaya? Ahaya is just simply the Aramaic and biblical Hebrew name of I am that I am. I am that I am is English. There was no such thing as English when our father, when Yahshua walked this earth, English was not created until the 1600s. So therefore, our ancestors, they had to be speaking something, but it wasn't Latin, it wasn't Greek, and it wasn't English. So this is why I'm showing this verse right here, because if you're not going to believe what I'm going to show you in Exodus and what the conversation that the father and Moshe had, then you're not going to believe anything else. So it's nothing else I'm going to be able to tell y'all about Ahia in his name. Okay. So let me go on. Hopefully your belief was written in the word. If you believe Moses, then you'll believe what the was written in Exodus. And right here, this is pretty much sums it up when um, Yasha said up here that your accuser, you, um, but do not think that I will accuse you before the father. Your accuser is Moses on whom your hopes are set on. So right here, I had some notes down here. Um, love cannot accuse because see, it, Yasha is saying, Yasha is saying he cannot be an accuser. He is forever a judge only because love must judge hatred and light must judge darkness by revealing it, by exposing it. And yet the very revelation of love and light condemns hatred and darkness, right? And then I put the heart doesn't need an accuser. <laughs> the heart will accuse itself. It needs no sentence. It condemns itself. This is why our father looks at our heart. It don't need an accuser. He can look right at your heart and see it condemns itself because that's what these Pharisees was, 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 was in their heart. It was in there. It, it don't even need to come out. The father see their heart. He's seen their heart. That's why y'all should say, I don't need to accuse you to the father. The father is already see your heart. He see, he said, you don't have the father in you. And the father, you haven't seen him or spoke to him or heard him or nothing. <laughs> he was just simply um, 
letting them Pharisees have it, but they just didn't know who Yasha was. Yasha was the father in the flesh. That's why he knew every single thing. It's like the spirit of the father was within him. The father, man, this, that was so, that was so profound to me. I don't know. That was just so, um, let me see. Okay, now here go, Exodus. This is what's written in Exodus chapter three, verse 13 through 14 says, Moses said to Ahio, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And then they, they, the Israelites, ask me, what is his name? Because all, of course, Moses already knew how the Israelites was. We're going to say, well, what is his name? That's how we are. That listen, Moses know, knew his people. And, and that's what he said. They're going to ask me what your name is. And then Moses said, Father, what should I tell them? And Ahiah said, Ahiah said, Ahiah said, the father of, listen, Yasha wasn't even here yet when this was written. When Moses wrote this, the father says, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. If you're not an Israelite, then don't worry about it. You don't have to say I am the father. It was talking to Israelites anyway. So this is why some people, some people that say, why you call him, uh, I, I am that I am. I call him. And the reason why he tells us to call him, I am that I am is because the father is saying you're I'm whatever to you that you want me. That's why I say he is my everything. He is my doctor, my lawyer, my preacher, my teacher, my husband, my best friend. He said, I am who I am. I am who I am to you. Hey, I am, I am who I am to you. I am your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your cousin. I'm your, I'm your everything, your doctor, your lawyer, your preacher, your teacher. Um, you're everything. So if we consider a higher out everything, he this is why he say, I am who I am. I am that I am. I am who I am and I am that I am. Is that his name? For now, that's his name because that's what he told us to call him. That's what he, he told most. To huh? He was, talking to he was talking to the Israelites. He was only talking to the Israelites. Moses wanted to know because it was addressed to Moses said to, to Ahiah, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And then they, Israelites, ask me, what is, what we going to, they going to ask him, what is his name that sent you to us then? We want to know his name. And then Ahio said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. So if you're not an Israelite, then you, you, you may not have to call him I am that I am, but this is what, and I am that I am is English. When you, tr when you translate, I am that I am into the Aramaic and Hebrew, biblical Hebrew, you're going to go get a higher. You're going to get a higher. And you're going to see all online where it's going to say, eh, you're, e that's absolutely wrong because there are no E's and no vowels whatsoever in he biblical Hebrew and the biblical Hebrew there are no vowel points all that stuff we're gonna go as I go into it you you you're gonna see and um tell the truth and shame the devil that video has a whole cut breakdown on the um the um the letters that's in the Aramaic in the Hebrew were well, actually Aramaic is symbols but 
Um, this is why we call him a higher because English was not thought about until the 1600s, Latin and Greek. That's not the language that our ancestors spoke. So we have to translate things back into the biblical and the way, and then I'm going to show y'all a cup, um, this right here, um, where the father tells us in Hosea chapter two, verse 16, in that day, the class of higher, you will call me my husband, Ishi. Some Bibles may say Ishi, I-S-H-I, I-S-H, but I is, we already know I is Latin. I is there there are no I's in J's in Greek in in or even in Latin. If, if you see a J anywhere, that's English because it's no J's in Greek, it's no J's in Latin. The V come from Latin. It's just you have to really them two, them, them Greek, Latin, and English, them three languages is there to trip you up. And we need to understand the Aramaic and the biblical Hebrew because biblical Hebrew does not have vowels. It, 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 it wasn't confusing and difficult, the language that our ancestors spoke. This modern day Hebrew that they got with all these vowel points and this dot, 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 dot everywhere, that's Yiddish. That is a Yiddish language and that Yiddish is not a language that we should supposed to be even learning anyway. And I'm gonna show you as we go forward. Right here, uh, um, some more, um, uh, a higher is a title and L-O-R-D means bell, okay? I'm gonna show y'all who bell is real fast. This is Baal, Baalam. You may see in your Bible, B-A-A-L-A-M. And I'm gonna explain that. I'm gonna explain this for you all. I'm gonna explain it. Now, what happened, let me let me explain this before, before I go further. Ham had four sons, Egypt, Foot, Cush, and Canaan. Egypt and Canaan. Canaan was over here in the land. Egypt, we were, we Egypt was when our ancestors were enslaved. So when our ancestors were being enslaved, our ancestors were being enslaved by. Ham's children, who are a dark raced people. The Israelites that were in our ancestors, when they served slavery over in Egypt the first time, it was Ham's son. And Ham's son, if you look in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, Egyptians were a dark race people. They were not, I wouldn't care what nobody said. Zondervan Bible Dictionary gives you the truth. Egypt, Foot, Cush, all of them, Ham was the progenitor of the dark races, but not the Negroes. The Egyptians, the Libyans, the Phoenicians, the Canaanites, the, 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 the all of them. And the Egyptians, is who enslaved the Israelites. So when we came, when our ancestors came from out of slavery, they went into their land. They was going into their land. And the father said, kill all the Canaanites. Kill all the Canaanites. Kill them all out of there. Okay. Y'all got to remember, Egypt and Canaan was brothers. This is why it's so much hatred and we're, we're hated by all the nations. We're hated by all the nations because not only was we enslaved by um, Ham's children, you know, 
another one of his sons invaded the land, invaded our land. So we had to go on there. And then now the Egyptians is even more mad at us because isn't Egypt, Canaan, Foot, and Cush brothers? Wouldn't you be mad if somebody killed, had the kid? So this explains why it's so much hatred, why you have so, so many Africans, so-called what the world called today, because they are the land of Ham, why you have so many nations that hate. This is why you have this. And you're hated by so many. I could never, myself, coming up, I could never understand. I'm like, what did I do to these people? But they know who you are, but we just didn't know who, who we was. So all this hate that was directed towards us when we were in the dark, we just we just want to get along and be loving and caring and, you know, stuff like that. We walking around in the dark, but the whole time, the Africans, they knew. They know everything. They know everything. They know more stuff than the the Greeks and the in 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 the people you think that's in your land of captivity. Do they know? They are the very ones that co they co was co conspirators into selling our ancestors into slavery. So they co-conspired with to sell a, a people into, and these people are the ones who served Baal. This is why the father told us, when y'all go into the land, listen, Israelites, listen up. The father said, listen up and listen up close. When you get in there, because he left a sprinkle of them Canaanites in that land, Tyree and Zidon. Don't think he didn't. The father left a little sprinkle in the land just to see what we gonna do. So when we got in there, he said, listen up Israelites. When you get in there, don't mix with them. Don't be serving their gods and don't be following what they doing. Cause they was off the chain then and they still off the chain now. And the father then woke us up and he gonna keep on waking us up. And it ain't nothing nobody can do about that. Those Canaanites serve Baal. They serve this Baal right here. This was their God. And the father told us when we went into the land, don't follow them Canaanites. But what do we do? You sat there this modern, even in today's time, you best to be careful about what the world call them Africans. They not Africans. They know who they are. They know they Egyptians. They know they, because you got some of them that's wholesome. Not all of them. Some of them that's wholesome and serve the father. That's all spirit and all truth. But you got to be very careful of which ones is serving Bill because they do all kinds of rituals and they do all kinds of, they will host, think they can host spells on you, but it doesn't matter if they can, if, if you believe in the father, it's nothing. I don't care what a witchcraft, what, what, if you have the protection of the father and you are under his covering and you are one of his chosen and you his elect, and I wouldn't care what kind of spell somebody using. You, your spell not going to work on somebody that don't, first of all, don't believe. So we have to be very careful of saying L-O-R-D because guess what? L-O-R-D is simply bail in biblical Hebrew. When you pray to L-O-R-D, this is who you praying to. All right here. That is your Lord. That is the Canaanites Lord. That is because you're just saying Baal in English. And in English, it means Lord. Baal means Lord. This demonic demon right here is Baal, is Lord, is Baal is Lord. This is why the father tells us right here, I'm going to take it off your tongue. 
you will no longer call me Lord. The father don't want you calling him that. You keep calling him Lord. You, I don't know who you calling on, but you're not calling on the, the God, the, the, the higher, the great I am that I am, the creator of heaven and earth, the one that created you, the one that's all spirit and all truth, not when you saying L-O-R-D, and not when you saying anything else. If you calling on JC guy, you're calling on a idol. You're calling on, that's not the father. It's not the father. Because in Exodus, he said all those, that's the, uh, the, now I'm telling you, you got to be very careful because some of these people, you got some people innocently still say JC and still innocently say L-O-R-D because they really just don't know. But you have to be careful about those that call on G-O-D and be saying J-E-S-U-S. They know exactly who they calling on. For example, your celebrities. You think they don't know who they serve? You know, you got some people that's really, really innocent. You know what I'm saying? And they really, the father hasn't brought them into the truth yet. But you, this is why the father said, you got to test the fruit. It ain't no celebrity out here going to tell me they don't know who, they don't know who they serving. Maybe probably a handful of them. Some of them probably not. I'm going to give them a benefit of the doubt because some of them are still, you know, in the dark and may not know i'm not gonna say all of them that will be unfair but majority of them so we have to use discernment and we have to understand that we got to be very careful about people who say l that's why i'm very careful about things i listen to and people that use in the name l-o-r-d people that's using j-e-s-u-s people that's still using them names because guess what? If the father, if you, if you got connections with the father, then you should not be calling him by J-E-S-U-S. And you should not be calling him, not when you, uh, if you call yourself an Israelite, maybe you're African, maybe you're a Canaanite. And that's why you call it on J Jesus and Lord, because that's what the Africans do. They, their, their Lord is that bell guy. Balaam, B-A-A-L-A-M. That's in the Bible. Y'all have to be very, very careful who you listen to and who's calling on this, this name. Because the father then told us all these false gods and, 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 you know, and some people is just innocently, you know, still calling on the name because I have to give everybody the benefit of the doubt, you know, and just use discernment and look at people. Because at once upon a time, we all called him G-A-E-S-U-S. And we all called them L-O-R-D. At once upon a time, we all, that's like um, um, Christmas and bowing down to the tree. This was innocently done. So there are still people out here that innocently do these things, but we just have to be careful and be aware. Hallelujah. Because, you know, if, if you're saying you got the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit would have been and told you the name. And you would have been discovered to be able to go into Exodus and be able to see at least saying I am that I am if you ain't saying nothing else. Even if you don't want to say a higher, even if you don't want to use the Aramaic term. Or even the, the, the father told you to say, I am that I am. The father understands that before he understands J-E-S-U-S -S and L-O-R-D. When he sat there and told you, don't call me L-O-R-D. So this is why I don't use that name for all those who continue to send this to my email. I will never call him by no L-O-R-D or no J-E-S-U-S -S because that's not his name. And that's not what he told me to call him. If anything, I'll continue to call him the great I am that I am. That's what I will call him. And that's just simply English. And I already knew. I said, well, Father, you, 
my ancestors wasn't speaking English. So what's the, what's, what name did my father's call him? That's what I was wanting to figure out. And sure enough, when you translate I am that I am, it's a higher all day long, all day long. And I'm going to keep on calling him that until he, until the books change from I am that I am. I am that I am is simply a higher. And that's what we ought to call him because that's what it says right here in Exodus. And if you're not an Israelite, then the father wasn't talking to you, but I'm an Israelite. So that's what my father told me to call him. I am that I am a higher. And I, uh, they wasn't speaking English. So I already knew it was something. It was another name that our ancestors used. And that name is, uh, if I'm pronouncing it, uh, a higher. It's the breath of the father. A-H, the Y for the DNA chromosome and the A-H at the end. Even if you don't have the other A, but it's a higher. That's what we call him. Or the great I am that I am, the, he the creator of heaven and earth, um, the uh, the God of Abraham, Yishak, and um, Yashua, I mean, Israel, Jacob, Israel, the Israel. He changed his name from Jacob to Israel. And that's when the Israelites were born. And so... If you're not part of the 12 tribe, which everybody that was born and raised in a, in a, if you were born, um, most, most, most people in, you know, I'm not saying everybody in the United States are Israelites because some people know there, if, if you know where you're from and you know your culture and you you know cuz you got some africans that's here or you some some people that's here and they know where they're from they just came over here they were born and raised in in another country or you know they they already know they're they we the only one that's lost the father says scattered and not knowing who we are as a people and not knowing where we at and you know if 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 you know your culture and where you you know because um it's all different nations of people but it's we was the only ones that didn't know who we was we were the we, we was the lost tribes so if you if you're not lost and you know who you are then you know I'm not saying that everybody have to say the great I am, but if you serve the creator, it's only one God. We all supposed to serve the creator of heaven and earth. So if you serve in another God, you're still wrong. Because everybody, it, it, it's only one God of, cre of, the, of creation. And who created everything under the, under the heavens you know you got some people that think they just came from a plant or rose up out the ground i don't know so i'm i'm just gonna go on right here bell uh god is a title and l-o-r-d just mean bell that's all it means bell is L-O-R-D in English. So Bell was a title and an honorific meaning owner, um, meaning owner or Lord. In the Northwest Semitic languages spoken in Levant during antiquity from its use among people, it came to be applied to gods. Y'all see that came to be applied to God. Scholars previously associated the theonium with solar cults and with a variety of unrelated patron deities. But inscriptions have shown that the name Baal was particularly associated with the storm and fertility god and Hadad and his local manifestation. The Hebrew Bible includes use of the term in reference to various Levitine deities, often 
when applications towards Hadad, who was belittled as a false god, that who that use that use was taken over into Christianity and Islam under the form of Beelzebub in demonology. We about to look at that. Baal means Lord. Y'all have to write these uh, Hosea 216 margin. How long have ye been two options? And Yasha, follow him. But if the if, if Ahia then follow him, first Kings 1820. But it says if Baal means Lord, then we should not use the word Lord. Beelzebub. That is found in Matthews 12, 24. Write that down. The form of the name of Baal as worship at the Philistines. Y'all see that? The Philistines is Ham's son. The Philistines, the Egyptians, the Canaanites, all of them are brothers and sisters. The Philistines are from the line of Ham. They are the ones who serve Baal and that have goat and that have demon and that have man, have beast, goat head. They serve that person. The Matthews 12, 24 even tell you it's more clarity in the scripture. City, this, this is the scripture that I'm reading. Philistine city of Akron, Baal, under this aspect of worship was viewed as the producer of flies and hence able to control this pest. So common in the East, he was consulted by Isaiah of Israel, CBC 849, Second Kings, you can read that too, chapter one, verses two through 16. Rendering of the name is Beelzebub, meaning Lord of the heavenly habitation. Pharisees called Beelzebub, Beelzebub, the prince of the demons. Y'all see that? The prince of the demons. So y'all have to be very careful because some of these they, we had some of our own people that turned against Yasha. It wasn't all just um, Ham's children because we had some of our own ancestors that was non-believers and unrepentant. It wasn't just Ham's children because it was some of us Israelites that went into the land and started following behind the Canaanites like we big followers right now to this day. All we want to do is do what somebody else do instead of doing what our father tell us to do. We following behind all when they suppose we supposed to be the light and the salt of the world. But back in that, that time when y'all should walk this earth, sure enough, you had a whole bunch of Israelites following behind them Pharisees and they all wind up serving of the, cause we already seen it. The father said, I just ought to go down there and kill them all, uh, Moses. Look at them. Down there serving that daggone golden calf. Hot dancing in. We just off the chain. And stiff-necking and hard-headed and rebellious our ancestors was. Because it was, but we 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 just got infil our ancestors was infiltrated by what the Canaanites taught them. They was the ones who were serving the gods and that's how they we wind up following behind it because the father already told us when y'all go into the land, don't do that. But no, we ain't listen. We ain't listen. We don't listen then and we don't still don't listen now. That's why the father said it's going to be a remnant of people that's going to, to return because they stiff and neck and hard head and rebellious and they're going to be turned over to a reprobate mind and the father going to let you, that lie that you believe is going to be a lie that's going to lead you to your demise because the father says, okay, you don't have love for the truth. So I'm going to let you believe that. 
And once the father takes his hands off you, that 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 brought tears to my eyes this morning when I was reading. I said, Father, no, don't, don't, don't do that. I was begging the father, like, you know, because I see the world, you know, going about their own way and they don't want to do what the father says do and you see people in the world today really just being turned over to a reprobate mind just you know they they not even don't even want to read the word they don't want to read the word and they, they reject the father by rejecting his word by not reading it ahia and his son yasha the name ahia comes from combining the prefix of Alof and ah, uh, yeah, y'all see that? That's backwards. Ah, uh, the the breath of the father in the front and the end. Ah, uh, hi, yeah. So even if you you the a is solid. In in biblical Hebrew, that a is always silent. That's why it's not there. Ah, uh, higher. Uh, hot because it, the, the that that a is silent. It had no it the, the father that a is silent. But if you put the a there, it still spells a higher, a higher. But the a is silent. Okay, it's still a higher. The first person singular. Abrabat Ahaya means to be, become, and exist. When you put the two words together for the name you get, I am. I exist or I who created existence. Our father created the very existence. He created the very, for you to ex even exist here. He's the spirit. He's the spirit and he's all true. The name Yah, Yah or YH, YH repeats the name Yah twice, but also comes from combining Yod, Yod with ah, Ahio. How it is written makes it a third person singular, Ahio. When you put the two words together for the name, you get he is, he be, he exists or he who creates existence. The name Ahia is mentioned prominently only once in scripture as Ahia Asher Ahia when he was speaking directly to Moshe. For further research and study, check out the online Paleo and Hebrew Dictionary. This is where I got that from. This right here, all this what I just read, I got it from out of the Paleo and Hebrew Dictionary. And it's an online Paleo and Hebrew Dictionary. You have to understand Paleo. You have to understand in order to understand. Okay. Strong's Concordance is a... Uh, Bail, it means owner, and it means, again, Lord. Original word, you got to remove them vowel points and that little dot. I think the the, the biblical uh, bet did have a B in the middle. It did have a dot. So, but them lines underneath, them vowel points, remove that. That's, that's no. Biblical Hebrew didn't have no stashes and stuff at the bottom on none of them stones but the bet that's a that's the letter bet part of speech noun masculine transliteration is bell see when you translate it it spells at lord is bell you just got to translate it into english once you translate it into the english bell is going to become lord just like I am that I am is a higher. Just like you translate, you once you translate things, that's why the father said, "Be we speak a cursed language. That's why the, the father said, our words, less is best. Because we don't never know what we saying out of our mouth. These English words, is this English language 
is cursed. Is cursed. Everything we say out of our mouth probably is a curse. That's why the father said, just mm, mm, mom's the word. Just say our father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's it. Because you never know what they didn't, what kind of word you saying out your mouth. We can't even say the very word Lord without them putting some demonic stuff attached to it. The, uh, this is by all, that's the definite, the definition on it, Bill. Okay, let's move on. False gods and lords. Y'all see this right here? Look at, look at, look at, look at this. The star, the moon, the star inside the moon. And then we have the, uh, where do we see this sign at? All over. Where do we see the sign at? All over um, Amalams, you see them everywhere, all over. And look what's in the middle. Look, at, look what in the middle, y'all look at my pointer, in the middle right here. And it's half man and half goat. This is why you hear the celebrity saying, I'm the, I'm the goat. I'm the goat. I'm the goat. If you Google right now and you will see um, the very uh, celebrity, I don't even want to call their names. I can't sick of it. Um, but they, she had the goat, goat horns on her head. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Everybody didn't seen it, but probably just didn't realize what she was doing. But her, she, he, she already telling everybody that follows her, which has uh, billions of followers, probably that she, who she served who she pledged her allegiance to, her and her husband. You know what I'm saying? Because all over, you see her wearing these things. You can just Google with goat ears, with goat goat horns, goat horns, celebrities with goat horns, and all kinds of stuff going to pop up. And they telling you who they pledged their allegiance to, and you follow them, you're going to follow them straight to hell. Because that's where they're going. Because they already know where they're going. They telling you who they serve and they telling you right to your face who you who they serve. False God, Molech, Molech, Baal, the abortion child sacrifice. Okay. I don't, I, I don't know why that was in the statue because it's, you know, the, the, I guess it's the kids looking up to him. Can anybody uh, help with that while the kids is looking up to him? I always looked at that too and was like, why is, they, why is that in there? Why is the kids looking up to this thing? Huh? Child sacrifices maybe? I don't know. I don't, I don't know, but you can see the legs got hair on it. It's half, um, them goat, goat hair on the legs and, um, let's move on. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 39, who is Baal? And I'm just going to read, um, Bell, read this real biblical Hebrew, usually spelled Bell in English is Northwest Semitic title and sim symbolically meaning master or Lord that is used in various gods who were patrons and cities of the vine. I think I've read this over agriculture. Um, Bell can refer to any God and even to human officials in some texts. It is used for Hadad, a God in the rain, thunder, fertility, agriculture, since only priests were allowed to utter his divine name, Hadad, the Baal was commonly used. Baal referred to Hadad, the Lord on over the, the assembly of gods on the holy mount of heaven, but rather referred to any number of local spirit deities worship as cults, images, each called the Baal and regarded in the Hebrew Bible in that context as a false god. Ahaya, this is what um, Ezekiel 20 verse 39 says. That is what Ahaya and 
go and serve your idols, every one of you, but afterwards you will surely listen to me and no longer profane my holy name with your gifts and idols. Most don't know and understand that Lord means Baal. Um, let's move on. Okay, Jeremiah 23, 27. Y'all can look that over. Jeremiah 23, 27. And um That's just another um, deity. The Ruach of Prophecy. Let's move on to the Ruach of Prophecy. To fully understand the context and receive the Ruach of Kodesh, Holy Spirit, we must cry out and draw closer to Yasha. It is thy father who will then draw us near to him. We all must have our own personal and intimate relationship with our father. It is very important for us to hear and study his word. Draw near to a higher and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, hearts, and minds. That's James chapter four, verse eight. Let me move this over. No. I'm just making sure I have this line that's not cut off, y'all. Revelation 19, 9 says the testimony of Yasha is the Ruach of the prophecy. What this means is when we as believers in Yasha are connected spiritually, the Ruach spirit will begin to reveal the spirit of prophecy within us. Our relationship with our father Ahaya becomes anointed and our prayers become even more powerful. We begin to receive divine revelations when we read and study our father's word, his spiritual light will illuminate everything that we do. Now, I'm going to go right here. Um, this is the narrow path that many within the body, many within the body of Yasha misconstrue. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit and are connected spiritually, we become even more powerful. If this were not true, the enemy would not have gone through extraordinary steps to hide and destroy our history. Hide, destroy our language, hide, destroy our names and who we are as a people. Understand this, y'all. The Greek, Latin, and the English language will simply, we simply did not speak that. The English language did not exist until the 1600s which was forced upon us. So one must ask the question, if our ancestors did not speak English, what language did they speak? The modern day Hebrew language spoken and taught today around the world is not, y'all hear me, it's not the biblical Hebrew language. It again, and I said this earlier, Yiddish. So why are most in the body learning a language or being taught a language that was made up by those who oppress us and continue to oppress us? Why are we learning a language from them? The Holy Spirit will teach, lead, and guide us into all truth, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And that's what the Father had to tell me. Because I too was once, and I am guilty of this, because I too was one that was thinking that I need to go learn Hebrew, um, you know, thinking so, you know, but the father says that he, he the, through the Holy Spirit told me that's not, that's not biblical Hebrew. It is not biblical Hebrew. You're not learning because the vowel points were, were were not there. So this is why I pulled, I had to, um, I had to um not what's the what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I had to withdraw from classes. 
Hold on, y'all. Yeah, I had to withdraw myself from the classes because I was like, that that's not, that's just not the language. That's not the language that they spoke. They spoke, if anything, I should have been learning paleo. I should have been learning Aramaic. Our father, Ohio, will restore. He said he will restore all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And right here is some scriptures that y'all can see what language and what tongue our ancestors spoke. And it's in the apocryphal books. Apocry Jasher 49.10. It says, now, therefore, a higher out king, behold, this Aramaic Hebrew man, Joseph, Yosef, can only speak the Hebrew language. And how then can he be over us, the second under government, a man who not even know of our language? Y'all see that? And second Maccabees uh, 721, Second Maccabees 727, Second Maccabees 1237. He look right here, Hebrew language, Hebrew language, Hebrew language. But when you go to it, it'll say it's gonna say uh written. Um, oh, oh, they spoke, but then moved the word, removed the word Hebrew. But some in Jubilees is still there. And like in my Bible, I have it say Aramaic. It say they spoke Aramaic. It said Aramaic. I'm like, wow. And then throughout all these scriptures that I was looking up, researching, all these scriptures, it says they spoke Aramaic and Hebrew. Then I have a Bible. I wish I could take a picture of that Bible that had Aramaic in it. And here's some more scriptures. Uh, Jubilees. Jubilees chapter 4. Verse 17 through 18, y'all, who it said who uh Enoch was the first among men that are born on earth who learned writing Hebrew. Second Maccabees 15 28. Now, when the battle was done, returning again with joy, they knew that Nequa lay dead in his harness. Then they made a great shout. And a noise praising Yasha of hosts in their own language. It says their own language, but they removed Hebrew. It is 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 very evident that what language we spoke. And here goes some more. Here goes some more. Here go another one. Jubilees. I'ma read this one. Jubilees 12, 25, 27. And the great I am, a higher out king, open. Abraham's mouth, Abram's mouth, because his name wasn't Abraham at the time, and ears, so that he may hear and speak with his mouth with the language which has been revealed. Listen to this, what the father says, Aramaic is the language, for he has ceased from the mouths of all the children of men from the day of the overthrow of the Tower of Babel. Okay? Ahia sees this language from all the children of men since the throw of the Tower of Babel. Then Ahia said, I, Ahia, open Abram's mouth and ears and his lips. And I begin to speak with him in Hebrew, in the Hebrew, in the tongue of creation. The tongue of creation. Then the father said, and he took the books of his father and these were written. Okay, this is what we was taught. We was taught the language that Abraham was taught. Abraham was taught a language by the creator, by the father. He said, I opened his mouth and ears. And he said, and he transcribed them and he began from then henceforth there to study them. Abraham, and then this is what Ahia said, and I, Ahia, made known to Abraham him that which he could not understand. 
anything that Abraham didn't understand, the father gave him understanding far as the language was concerned. So this is when Abraham and Sarah had Isaac. Don't you think Abraham taught Isaac the same language that he taught to, that Ahiah taught to him? Then when Isaac was born, Isaac, Isaac married Rebecca and they had kids and so on and so forth. That's what we spoke. Period. It's right here in Jubilees chapter 12, verse 25 through 27. The tongue of creation. It was not English. Forget about it. Forget about Greek, Latin, and English. It was not it. And Ahiah made known to Abram him that which he could not understand, and he studied them during the six rainy months. Hallelujah. Truth, proof positive. These are some more Aramaic all through the scripture, even in, even in the Bible. They even have it in Acts. Jubilees 19, verse 14 and 15. Acts chapter 26, verse 14. It says Aramaic tongue in my Bible. That's where I put Aramaic tongue right there because in the Bible that I have, it says Aramaic. Okay, Acts chapter 21, verse 40. It says Aramaic tongue. Acts chapter 22, verse 2. And then Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. These are other scriptures, you know, because and even the apocryphal books don't you you can go online and look up any type of anything you want to while it's at your fingertips, while you still have, you know, at, at, it's right at the apocrypha is at your fingertips. So you can still look it up even if you don't have the apocrypha. But it's not saying that, you know, um final restoration promised. And this is the final restoration of the father. Final restoration promise made from Ahia, our father, the king to the Israelites remnant. Then I will purify the lips of the people that all of them may call on the name of Ahia and serve him shoulder to shoulder from beyond the rivers of Cush. My worshipers may scatter my worshipers, my scattered people will bring me offerings on the day, on that day, you, Jerusalem, will not be put to shame for all the wrongs you have done to me, because I will remove from you your arrogant boasters. Never again will you be naughty on my holy hill, but I will leave within you the meek and humble, the remnant of Israel will trust in the name of Ahia. They will do no wrong. They will tell no lies. A deceitful tongue will not be found in their mouths. They will not eat and lie down and no one will make them afraid. Hallelujah. And the father said, sing, O daughter Zion, shout aloud, Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart, daughter of Jerusalem, Ahia has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. Ahia, the king of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm on that day. They will say to Jerusalem, do not fear, Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. Ahia, your father, is with you. The mighty warrior who saves he will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Ahia restores all. He says, I will remove from you. Hold on, y'all. I will remove from you all who mourn over the loss of your appointed festivals, which is a burden and a reproach for you. At that time, I will deal with all who oppressed you. Every last one of y'all. Every last one of you. Oppressors. I will rescue the lame 
I will gather the exiles. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they have suffered shame. Every land. Did you heard that? Every land. It doesn't matter. The father is saying what he's saying. And every word in these that he speak will ring true. I will gather the exiles. Who is the exiles? The ones that's in captivity. I'm going to gather the exiles. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they have suffered shame. At that time, I will gather you. He didn't say nobody else was going to gather us. He said, I'm going to gather you at that time. I will bring you home. Who's going to bring us home? The father. I will give you honor and praise among all the people of the earth. Not anywhere else. He said, when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says Ahia. He said he was going to restore every single thing that has been stolen. Y'all have to understand the father is going to restore everything. Okay, John the Baptist doubts. I, I think I'm... I think I'm finished with all the questions and that was a long, 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 you know, well overdue um, questions. And I, hopefully I answered all the questions. And if I didn't, I think I did. I think I did. I think I did because I, I made sure that I wrote the question down and then did stuff as I, you know, but the main ones was, you know, um, Ohio, the name, you know, um, because I'm not going to understand that because people, um, you know, we've been calling him JC for since we've been born, since before our, our grandmothers and great grandmothers and great great grandmothers. And so, you know, it goes back, JC goes back a long way. So I can understand that. But when it's time, you know, he'll bring, the father will bring everybody into the truth about his name in his time. When you, you just do take it to the father in prayer, take it to the father in prayer. You take all things to the father in prayer and you have him to reveal what his name is. And he will, you have to wait because it didn't come to me overnight. It out. It, it did not come to me overnight, but I eventually, you know, because I kept praying about it. I kept praying about it, and I want because I wanted to know the truth, and I'm, I'm, I wanted to know the truth. I know that JC wasn't it. I wasn't going to be. I didn't want to be set out uh, and continue to believe in a lie and be handed over to a reprobate mind. No, I didn't want that. I'm going to believe what the father is going to reveal to me and what he's going to show me. And I'm going to believe that. And, and if that's why I said, if anything, I'm going to call him the great I am that I am. I'm still not going to call him JC. Not most, especially after he done showed me this scripture in Exodus. So, um, John the Baptist doubts. Chapter 11. This is really a, a really short, short chapter that can pretty much um, be done in like literally 10 minutes. Um, it was very short. So that's why I said it, this was the perfect time to answer all the questions because this lesson would have only not, you know, it would have, it's only three parts to it. Like one, two, literally one, two, three. Okay. John the Baptist doubts Matthew 11, chapter one, verse 19. After Yahshua had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John was, when John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of Yahshua, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who is to come? 
or should we expect someone else? See, John, the annotation and um, um, to this, John heard about what Yasha had been doing and how he traveled from place to place. So John sent his disciples to Yasha asking if he was the one who is to come. John wanted to know if Yasha was really the Mashiach. John may have had doubts, be, may, may have had doubts because Yasha had not yet brought judgment on those who have not repented. Most likely, John expected Yasha to immediately bring an earthly kingdom. John was wondering why Yasha hasn't yet done what John expected him to do pretty much. So that was just like, um, that's why it, it, they were saying that he um, he was uh, doubting because a, a lot of people thought Yasha was just going to come and just like get rid of all the, you know, do all the judging. Thank you. Yasha replied, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blesses anyone who does not stumble on account of me. Isaiah 61, one prophecies about Yasha. The spirit of Ahia is upon me because Ahia has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Yasha means for John to be reassured. He wanted um, John to be reassured, even when Yasha does not meet our exact expectations, we can be confident that he's fulfilling his every promise. Hallelujah. And Matthew 7 through 11, as John's disciples were leaving, Yasha began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind. Verse eight says, if not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in the king's palace, palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there was not, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Okay, now let me explain that. As John's disciples were leaving, Yasha turned to the crowd and reminds them how strong and unmovable John was during his ministry to Israel. Yasha declared that not only was John a prophet, but he was the very one that Isaiah prophesied that would come to prepare the way for Yasha. And you can look that up in Malachi 3, 1. Among all human beings born up to that point, John was the greatest. Still, the lowest person in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. The meaning here seems to be that John the Baptist clearly understood a highest plan more than any prophet who came before Yahshua. Any, um, understood a highest plan more than any prophet that came before Yahshua, came before. Yahshua adds that if his listeners can accept it. John is the spiritual fulfillment of the prophecy that Elisha would return. Matthews 11, 7 and 11. I don't know why this thing popped in front of my thing. From the days of John the Baptist until now, 
the kingdom of heaven has been subject to violence and violent people have been raiding it. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. Whoever has ears, let him hear. Anytime you hear, y'all should say, whoever have ears, let them hear. You want to have ears to hear. Listen up. <laughs> yes, listen up. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to others. We played the pipe for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. Um, and a dirge is just a song for the dead. And you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he has a demon. They said he has a demon. Verse 19, the son of man came eating and drinking and they say here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. Okay, let's look at the annotation. Let's see. Yasha makes it clear, although some Israelites rejected the preaching of John the Baptist, some also rejected Yasha's messages. Yasha compares the Israelites of this generation to our ancestors complaining that they won't participate in their folly. Can you? No matter what they saw and no matter what Ohio provided, they simply demand the opposite. Their real motive is to resist, not to submit. Their real motive was to resist. Y'all see that? Not to submit. Instead of them hearkening to John the Baptist and truly repenting, the people decided he had a demon because of his strange and restrictive lifestyle. Instead of hearkening to Yasha and repenting, this generation decided that Yasha, they, they also decided that Yasha was a glutton and a drunkard because he did not lead a restrictive lifestyle. Yasha used the proverb to show that both he and John will be proven right in the end. Matthew 12, uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 12 through 19. Woe to the unrepentant and unresponsive. Then Yasha began to denounce the towns in which most of his miracles had been performed because they did not repent. Woe to Corazon. Ka Ka I hope I'm saying that right. Woe to Bethsaida. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Zidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Now I looked into what place this was. This is the where the um over there in what this world called the Middle East and where these people at is over there in that land. That is where the modern day you can look up C H O R A and see who um lives in the land today. So it's it's a it's of course y'all know the um the jays the jays the jays the jays um let's go but i tell you it will be more bearable for tyree and zidon on the day of judgment for than for you and you capernaum will will you be lifted to the heavens no you will go down to hades because just how these people gonna be they are so unrepentant they not they don't even serve yash they don't even serve Yasha. They are very unrepentant people. They don't, they don't serve Yasha. And you, Capernaum, will be lifted out to the heavens. No, you will go. Okay, I said that part. For if the miracles have 
the miracles that were performed and you had been performed in Sodom, it will have remained to this day. But I tell you that it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. Yasha thanks his father for hiding the truth. Let me see. I think I'm up here. Yasha, uh, woe to the unresponsive. Sorry about that. Next, Yasha pronounces judgment on the cities where the people did not repent despite seeing him perform great and powerful miracles. If the same miracles had been performed in the wicked Gentile cities of Tyre and Zidon, those idol worshipers would have repented in great humility. The Jays, cities of Karazan and Bethsaida will find Ohio's judgment less bearable than those pagan cities. The same is true of Yasha's own adopted hometown of Capernaum. Even wicked Sodom, which Ohio utterly destroyed in Genesis 19, 24 to 25, will have a more tolerable judgment than Capernaum. This suggests the people of Sodom are still subject to judgment despite the end of their earthly lives. It also hints that somehow there are levels of punishment or judgment for our earthly sins. And then Yasha gives knowledge and rest at that at that time, Yasha said, I praise you, Father of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to the little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son. And those who, whom the Son chooses, to reveal comes to me. All you who are weary and burdened, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Y'all hear that? 29 says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Take my yoke upon, upon you. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. That's the only rest you're going to find for your souls. Because out there and trying to figure out this thing, listen, this, this, you know, be watchful, but don't, don't let it burden you. The verse 30 says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know when things come from the Father. Because he's not going to put nothing on you that you can't bear. Yasha gives knowledge and rest. Yasha thanks his father for hiding the truth from those who are wise and understanding according to the world. His implication is that those who arrogantly assume their own wisdom will miss the truth because they, are, because they aren't really seeking. And they aren't really seeking and looking for it. Instead, Ohio will reveal truth. Will reveal truth to those the world dismiss as children. Yasha declares that he and the father know each other completely and that he can reveal the father to anyone he chooses. He invites those listening and those who are weary and weighed down in the sense of the Pharisees, extra rules and burdens. So don't be burdened down by these um, modern day Pharisees because they are out here, y'all, and requirements to take on his yoke and find rest for our souls. Matthew 11, 25, chapter 11, verse 25 through 30.
Shabbat shalom, all praise, honor, and glory to our Father, the creator of heaven and earth, Ahiah and his son Yasha and the Ruach Akadesh. So closing thoughts and remarks. As believers in Yasha, we walk by faith and not by sight. Walking and living by faith deepens our walk with Ahiah and his son Yasha because we have to depend on him and not on ourselves. We depend on our father's provision for our lives and his sovereignty, not on our own methods and plans. Faith causes us to have a deeper love for our father as we see him working in our lives and the circumstances we see around us. I pray that as a result of this study, our relationship with Ahaya and his son Yasha has grown deeper and our faith has grown stronger. I pray this study was enlightening, encouraging, and edifying. Any questions pertaining to any of the studies, please send email. All questions will be answered based on what the scripture says. If I don't have the answer, we will have to take it to the Father in prayer. Smile. <laughs> Remember, family, never run with things you're not sure about. Please take everything to our Father in prayer. To anyone who would like to join us via Zoom during live recordings, please email hhlhctlc at gmail.com for the link. Per the will of our Father, Ohio, and his son, Yasha, we meet every Shabbat. Email will have details, reference times, etc. Shalom, family, and have a blessed week. Okay, so now I'm going to stop the recording, close in prayer, and then we're going to have open discussion and questions. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom.